Howdy folks, Shell Presto here. And this, once again with my husband Mike. Howdy. So, I've been saying for a while that I'd do a, a video explaining some of our terrain and showcasing that and telling you guys how we did it, and here we are doing that. This is still mainly a uh, 2D drawing channel, um, but you know, this is art too, so. So, do you want to explain the concept behind this one? Sure. This is a, a piece of terrain that we built uh, primarily for use in tabletop war games like Warhammer 40,000. Uh, this is a destroyed, as you can tell, building. Uh, I didn't have a particular idea what it was going to be at first when I first started making it, but I decided to make it a pump station. It's in the... Uh, pumping water from uh, from a, a reservoir to uh, a, a pipe network. And it's basically just a couple pieces of scrap styrofoam. This is one piece, uh, and this is this is the other piece. They're were your normal uh, dense packaging styrofoam you get in a box. Uh, they were- These were for a TV, weren't they? I don't even or remember they what they were they a monitor? I don't even remember what they were from. But uh, you picked them up. You just happened to where you work as a technology company, and so Mike got extra styrofoam from there. So uh, basically, this was just cut apart with a, a hot wire cutter. I do have a proxon, but I didn't use a proxon for this. I just used the handheld cutter, which is basically a, a handle with a piece of metal that gets very hot, and it cuts through styrofoam. So I put try to cut the holes as interestingly as, as possible as you can if you turn around the side here you can see the sort of slanted um, the idea that like it, it maybe it, it was hit with a shell and exploded and there's put cracks in tried tried to make it like there was uh, bullet holes and other kinds of random damage you can uh, judge for yourself how successful I was at that some of the the areas are are more convincing than others um, but ultimately then, uh, got a shape I wanted with that, with those the two pieces of foam, glued them together, put them on uh, a foam board base. This is just your standard sheet of foam core that you can buy at uh, Walmart or Dollar Tree. Uh, it's basically two, two thin pieces of paper with uh, a thin sheet of foam beneath you, often used for, for kids' projects. Um, and there, it's just beveled at the end to make it sort of slope down. So once it was glued onto the foam, um, added some fiddly bits, the uh, exposed, yeah, the exposed bits of um, I beams or rebar, the, the sort of structural material poking through. Um, I, I think they're it, just wooden. They're not wood at all. They're actually they're they're plastic sprues. Sprues are the the plastic frames that miniatures usually come on. Uh, so I thought that added. Um, a bit of realism to it. And you can actually see the skeleton in the building. Those are wires? Yeah, those are just uh, wires I cut from an old computer, uh, paint it, rust it. Uh, I like these pieces in particular. <laughs> these are uh, cat food containers. Yep. Um, the Crave wet cat food, um, which my cats don't actually like that much, but we like using them for uh, parts. So they have to eat them. And then this is uh, it's a baby food container. Yeah, the the twist pouches, like the applesauce pouches. Uh, that's what that is. The, the idea that I thought that looked pretty good as as like a, a ventilation fan on the roof. You're going to find a, a lot of stuff um, that you can use that's basically junk if you want to do this kind of thing. You have to always kind of keep an eye out for it. Um, this this piece here is the the cartridge for a, a Delta faucet. It was the old um, the faucet I had. Um, or actually not the faucet, the, 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 the handle of the faucet, the mm -hmm. control, uh, in an old, in the old shower. Um, the, let's see what else on here. Um, oh, what were those from? Those are capacitors from a motherboard. So the same sources as the wire and this piece and this piece, they're just pieces I pulled off the motherboard. Um, the, the grating which you'll hear often referred to as, as granny grading uh, in uh, terrain making circles is, you know, the fence is that too. 
it's just cut at a different angle to make it look like chain link. But that's um, needle. What's it called? Yeah, ne needle point. Um, ne needle point the plastic things you mesh. pull yarn through to right. make pictures. And you can buy it at a craft store like Michael's for less than a dollar. Also, a in, sheet of it. also in the knitting aisle, obviously. Yep. Um, and then it works pretty good as as grading uh, chain link. The chain link posts in the fence are just wooden dowels. These and these are uh, packages of wooden shapes. Yeah, they, they, they're they basically different. You can buy packages of different size squares, packages of different size circles and other and other shapes um, to, to, to greeble it up, as we say. Um, they're just, that's supposed to be a <clears throat> uh, an electrical terminal, which I stenciled this on and... It's some of these are greebles from a kit, though, right? Yeah. So that the um, this something that looks like a, the junction box there, the electrical service is, is from a, a Warhammer Forty Thousand Imperial Guard Sentinel. Um, that's that is a piece from a um, the Maelstrom's Edge train kit, which you can buy. Very interesting parts on there. <clears throat> so is this this ladder and this hatch on the side? They're also from the Maelstrom's Edge train kit. So coming on the back, which is the, the probably the most interesting part of it, we have this is just a, a PVC a, a PVC elbow um, for that you get in the plumbing section of Lowe's or Home Depot. This is another baby food container mounted on a, a wooden. It's a different. Block. It's a different it's shape and a different brand. It doesn't quite have the the fan blade look to it like this one up here does. And this. Um, this ventilation duct here is, I'm not sure what it was from because it came with the house that we bought. It, I, I think it, it looks to me like this, the, um, the lid for uh, if you're spreading seeds or fertilizer, although the, the, the mesh work is, is a little narrow for that maybe. I'm not so um, sure. It might have been like a, a huge like flower or garlic container or something it's, too it, it, for the kitchen. It's definitely a lid though because it has screw, like uh, screws on the inside where you can uh, uh, screw it onto a jar. I think it's also worth noting that like we didn't say we're going to make this and then go around the house gathering up these right. parts. We kept these parts whenever we saw something that looked interesting and we just put them in a box and then when we were making the bunker, um, we we just we just used whatever we thought would be useful for it. Uh, yeah, this this there was no like sketches uh, or architectural plans drawn up for this for sure. It just sort of came together. Yeah. It was something that uh, spent a lot of time before anything was ever glued down, just putting bits and pieces here and there and seeing how it looked. Uh, oh well, I, I should also say I I'm not much of a three D artist, so like I. Well, I'll keep things like, you know, I kept the, these baby food lids and I think I was responsible for keeping that and the cat food containers thinking they'd look neat for terrain. It's Mike who puts all this stuff together. Um, I just help paint because obviously painting's more my thing. Before we get into uh, the, how I do the rest of it, uh, some of the interesting things about this as a terrain piece are besides it, um, in a tabletop war game, you need a lot of terrain to make... Uh, the game interesting because otherwise you just have miniatures marching across a flat table, blowing each other to hell, uh, and you know it's not very interesting. There's no tactics involved. There's no there's no maneuver. So this blocks line of sight, uh, but you can also hide troops in it. For instance, in particular, uh, obviously you could hide troops in there. You could even it's large enough that you could drive it. Uh, for 28 millimeter games, you can put a tank in there, uh, a space marine dreadnought, you know, war walkers. Something like that, um, but also on on the top, uh, where you have those little dugouts that were just they were not something I cut. They're actually they're they're just part of it. Uh, you could put snipers in there, or a, you know, a squad of troops dug in up there, taking pot shots at the enemy as as they move across the field. Now the 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 floor was just a lot of rubble. So the the same styrofoam pieces you see there that are, that are, are chunks are, are were actually pieces that were cut off of this main piece that, that I saved and they were cut again to make to have them leg leg correctly on the ground and look interesting uh, and there's some more on the other side too and, and basically the rest was 
the, the margins of it. Oh, they, these were a different kind of foam, weren't they? These were um, That's actually cork, cork, board. cork board. Yeah, so that the cork board makes a, a very interesting rock rock shape too and I uh, use cork for various things. But they're they're glued down um, sort of at, just as I thought looked interesting. Uh, and then on between the pieces of rubble and on the margins of the board, uh, we glued sand. And you do that by basically brushing on Elmer's glue, PVA glue, and then dumping sand. You can buy sand, uh, a 50-pound bag of sand at Lowe's for about $3, and you'll have it for the rest of your life uh, if you're just making terrain with it. And probably for and then, your, your grandchildren's life, too. And then flock and then uh, tuft grass that you bought. Yes, yeah, so the, the, the flock is... Flock, for those who don't know, um, if you don't use it in terrain, you often see it like covering jewelry boxes. It's basically colored sawdust, or it's ground down really fine. Um, in this case, we use it as like grass. Now, the, the other the tufts are what we call static grass. Um, you can make them yourself, but I actually bought them ready-made. Um, they're actually magnetic and, and you sprinkle them down, you run a little electromagnet over them and they stick up in the glue and then they make these stand up tufts. Uh, these are not static grass, they're, it's, they're just like hair fibers, they're sort of like the hair that comes on a Barbie doll. And we just cut them and glued them in, they're, they're kind of hard to work with as is, that's why I prefer the, the tufts. But I, at the time I didn't have different shades of the stand up grass that I wanted to use for Overgrowth, um, the idea was to make it look like weeds, you know, because this had been not only destroyed for a while, but, um, you know, derelict. No one was maintaining it. No one was mowing the lawn. No one was spraying Roundup um, around around the surface. So you can even see there's some tufts poking up there on the roof. Uh, and over on the, on the other side, is that anyone who has ever done um, maintenance on a house knows that vegetation gets places where you wouldn't expect it to. Um, this area here, we just uh, painted a uh, greenish tint with just a regular, like a folk art acrylic paint. Um, and if you could see, it's glossy. We just added a uh, Liquitex gloss medium. Yep. Um, it is. Is that it's a very, very shallow puddle. We've done puddles other uh, other cases where I've used um, resin or uh, woodland scenics realistic water. In this case. Um, it, it's too shallow to do that. There, it's just really in the spaces between the gridded sand, so uh, it, it it works pretty well as is just just painting it shiny, shinier than the rest of it. So it looks like it's it's a little bit of standing water and I, wet concrete. I happen to like the using the gloss medium because uh, when you do water effects that are puddles, um, the resin or the uh, water or the uh, scenics water effects can. Uh, roll off, but if you just use gloss medium, uh, it, it's just regular right. paint, so and, it stays where it's any at. Any sort of coating like that, the resin or, or the scenic water will roll off. You actually have to build uh, banks around it like you would a real river or, or a pond, and we have examples of that as well. Um, for the the inside, I was pretty happy with actually how I, I, I did the, the pattern on there. I looked up some uh, photos on, on you know Google image search to see about like cracked pavement and and the cracks were actually administered by a stencil set i, I bought uh, i just had um i got it at michael's it's just like random patterns it looks like crack crack concrete i jammed it in there dabbed the paint on in in black um over a, a lot lighter gray pavement color uh and then in certain the areas that were closer to the edge uh sprinkled flock and put some grass stuffs there where the idea is that you know, uh, if you have cracks in the concrete, you're more likely to have uh, vegetation growing there. But uh, the ones closest to the outside where the seeds and, and dirt blew in and it's getting sunlight and water, whereas on the inside, uh, it's not not growing as much there uh, because it's not getting the, the sunlight. So, you know, uh, I'm not saying you have to really think that much about it. A lot of this just sort of came together as is, but it does help if you take a look at pictures and just, you know, think about things logically, uh, especially for, for like a ruin is like, where, where does grass grow? How, how do the patterns of, of rust work? You know, they're going to come down when, when pieces of metal get wet and they're going to drip down the walls. They're not necessarily going to be horizontal. Uh, um, oh, uh, these were from a stencil too. 
Yep. Um, this was a different one. We actually, you, you have to not be afraid to cut apart your stencils so that they actually fit places. Yeah, th these are just mark markings I got that I thought um, would represent some sort of common symbols that are not necessarily going to be recognizable to us. Um, but maybe in the 41st millennium. And I, I think that was actually like a, a computer chip stencil. Right. It like was supposed to look like a an motherboard, ar an artist a... impression of a, of a circuit board layout. And then I have the, the, the stencils up here, the letter stencils on the, on the side. Um, I put PU, it's the idea is that it was said pump station. Um, going out but the rest of it was was blown away oh, no. I thought that was a nice we were talking about where would grass grow and whatnot I thought that uh, the fence yeah. with grass growing through it uh, wrecked on the ground there was a very nice touch one of the the technique for um, for the chain link fences is actually to it's just granny grading like the rest of it but it's cut at an angle um, so that the the it actually looks like diamonds instead of squares, so you're, you're just sort of turning it and then, then cutting a, a rectangle out of it. So you're actually sort of cutting it on a slant. That's how you get it to look. Um, if you have a chain link fence, you know that it looks more like that than it does if it if you just had the squares um, with the, the points at the corners instead of the points going up and down. And then the, there's a lot of dry brushing on this. Uh, I like dry brushing, and I dry brush, I dry brush uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty loosely. Um, the only the only area that I think really needs comment is the the rusty look, um, and that that's obviously like. Did I do? I think I did the silver first. Mm -hmm. I did the silver first, then I went on with like a, a burnt sienna, and. Uh, and if you, you go with a, a darker, like a, a gunmetal or a, a blacker kind of silver, but don't mix black with your silver because then it won't uh, sh shine or be as radiant. Um, put that down first. And then I, uh, with a very, very dry brush, went with burnt sienna over top to get that rusted look. And you'll see I also drug the rust effect down uh, underneath the pipes as well. I don't know how you get a good angle on that, but it's under there. You can see it under there and definitely there. Um, and then, uh, and then I, I took the silver over one more time just to make sure that I wasn't going too dark with the rust, but lots and lots of rust in various places. Uh, actually, I think there is something else worth commenting about the painting um, is that when you're painting something very large with this, typically you're painting you're painting miniatures with real small paintbrushes because the details are very small. This this you need to use larger brushes, but um, it's really it takes a, a, a ton of time. Um, and actually, I would recommend using an airbrush. Or what I use for most of this is is a rattle can spray you know a can of spray paint that you buy at Walmart. Now the problem with that is. Um, if it's you, foam. <laughs> if you get right, if so, certain this, most of this um, polystyrene foam will melt because of the solvents that you, it's put in the can of spray paint that basically waters the paint down so it can come out of the nozzle, um, eats through the foam. Now, if you want it to look damaged, that that can actually work out well. But um, if you want to keep it um, mostly, uh, you know, mostly intact, what you have to do, you have to coat it with something. In this case. For this particular case, I actually coated it with um, Mod Podge, which is a, a type of, of um, PVA glue, I guess. Um, you probably all know what Mod Podge is. So it's, it's it, you coat it with a with a paint it all over the foam parts with the brush, let it all dry, uh, and then um, you go over with with a coat of black spray paint. The whole so the whole thing was spray painted over to give it the undercoat. You could also when um, after I did this, I started using. Mod Podge that is uh, actually I poured paint into it so I have a, a separate jar and, and then we just paint it on so it's already black um, and it's actually a lot easier to work with then because you can you can tell when you're you're painting um, black over something that's white that you got all the spots when you're painting white on something that's white uh, this styrofoam was initially white it's much harder to tell and the other good thing with painting things black is that you want the deepest crags to be the darkest and the right. most in shadow too. So you instantly have that for going for yourself. 
Um, so, anything else? I think we covered most yep. of it. If you have any questions about this, uh, let us know in the comments. Um, we'll either get back to you in the comments or we'll address it in a follow-up video. And if you would like to see more videos like this, let us know because um, making terrain is, is something that we're, we're both interested in. Uh, and we have lots of different pieces that we could show you that are already made and even um, videos to show you how, how to make them. Oh, and uh, also we're authors. <laughs> um, we also uh, write in our spare time. Uh, we do urban fantasy and street level vigilante. Superhero and, and adventure fiction and short story and novel format. So please buy our books. The link will be at the end the video any if you if you want to support us that's one of the best ways you can help us is to so buy the books tell other people about it uh share this video and share the other stuff we make all right folks i hope you enjoyed this presto and mike over and out You stuck around after the credits. Of course you did. You're no fool. Okay, there's a meme that's been going around called Face Your Art. And the idea is that you just have a block that you break up into nine squares and put nine different faces that you've drawn. Uh, sort of just a fun comparison kind of thing. And I had so much fun making it that I decided to do three different ones. So first up is just a free-for-all. These are uh, all faces I've done recently and their color and in various different mediums. A lot of these I've done drawing videos for, so if you wanted to see how I could do them, you could absolutely go into my backlog of videos and check them out. These are all characters from our Ascension Epoch books, by the way. So next up, we've got a uh, post-it note art. I got into a phase for a while where I was doing a lot of ballpoint pen art on post-it notes and I had a lot of fun with it and I need to get back to it at some point but they're all square and I usually did close-ups of faces so it screamed to be done for this. Uh, these are oldies but goodies, still some of my favorites and a lot of these appear in our books. And finally, uh, I did it with just black and white ink work. Um, I had a lot of fun doing a lot of these. Most of these are pretty recent. Uh, I got back into doing inked line art again when, well, I did Inktober last year, and that got me started on it. And then I've been doing artwork for Bexham's Bazaar using medieval versions of our Ascension Epoch characters. Starting in issue 5, which is available on the 1st, um, I'll actually be doing a comic strip uh, one per month. And uh, it's just it's fun getting back to my inking roots and uh, my love of comic books again. So I'm looking forward to seeing that in print. Okay, folks, thanks for sticking around. Uh, I hope you guys have an awesome day. Presto, over and out.